five, four, three, two, one. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, just for people that don't know, Jennifer is a certified ultimate home stager and the founder of Birch and Co Home Staging and Redesign. Could you explain to the people a what an ultimate home stager is, um, and also how you got into the business and started uh, Birch and Co. Sure. Uh, I guess I will start with how I got into the business. Um, I had been selling advertising for quite a few years in a home decor publication. And I obviously did some uh, work with home stagers and always had been interested in, in the profession. Um, I also grew up with a mom that was in real estate and my dad was an architect. So he built pretty much every house we lived in and my sister's an interior designer. So there was always lots of talk around our dining room tables at night about uh, home design and selling homes and all of that. So it's always, it's, it's not something that's always been in my blood. Um, so a few, few years back, I decided um, to, you know, look into how to become a professional home stager, a, a certified stager. And that's when I came across becoming certified with the Ultimate Academy. They offer certification um, to um, people all across Canada. Um, so I actually did their intensive week-long course um, where we touched on everything from, you know, doing color consultations to um, how to make rooms appear larger and all of the design elements of home staging. Um, how to best market your home, because really what home staging is, is it's a marketing tool um, for selling your home. Um, and then through becoming a certified stager, I do do, um, you know, yearly updates on my, my certification as far as, you know, what trends in the market and, you know, different colors that we're seeing that are on trend and different trends within the real estate market, what people are looking for. You know, obviously what we're seeing right now is everyone wants home offices and everyone wants home workspaces because we're all home and extending our outdoor living because we're spending more time at home. So these are always the things that as home stagers we're, we're learning about and, and, and trying to incorporate into our staging. Okay, perfect. Um, for those that don't know, um, my first experience with a home stager uh, was several years ago. I was a new agent. Um, I was listing a home uh, where three men lived in that house. And um, it looked like a house where three guys lived in it. Um, if you can kind of, a, you know, get a picture in your head of what that looked like. Right. Um, we had some opinions of obviously how it looked. Uh, we weren't super impressed. Um, we enlisted the assistants of a home stager. Um, she came in, did a great job, put together a very um, simple list of some things that, you know, we could do, paint this door, um, put a picture over here, uh, clean this up, um, organize that. Um, and it paid off. Like in the end, we had, you know, had people sort of give their opinion after we had made those changes. Um, everybody thought it looked significantly better. Lo and behold, the house ended up selling, you know, way over asking price. The client was very happy. So ever since that experience, I've kind of been a very big convert on home stagers and sort of what they bring to the transaction as far as getting a home sold, um, A, quickly, and B, for the right amount of money or more. Mm -hmm. um, does home staging increase the value of a home being sold or listed. Absolutely. Um, and we, we as stagers, um, I mean, obviously we collect stats on our own, but um, industry average, we see um, return on investment um, or, or increase in value is five to 25% um, of a staged home. So, you know, if you're looking at an average home selling right now in the Burlington area, we are looking at about $800,000. So even at the low end of 5% increase, if you stage that home, that's an additional $40,000. So 
So that not only covers the cost of staging, um, you know, that that's money that you can then take to your to your new home and, and, and help with the updating or upgrades or whatever you might have to do with it. Um, so it's definitely, um, you know, there's definitely value in, in home staging for sure. Absolutely. Um, where do these numbers come from? Like, I know a lot of people like stagers throw these numbers around. Right. How is that kind of, you know, what can you tell the people as far as where those numbers come from to kind of, you know, let them know that those numbers are accurate and they are valid? Right. So I'm actually a member of RESA, which is Real Estate Staging Association, and they collect stats um, on a yearly basis. So this was the, the, the most recent um, survey that they did of uh, 13,000 homes all across North America. And so these are where these stats are coming from. As stagers, we do collect our own data, you know, every house we stage, you know, the value of the house, how much money the cost to stage the home and then how much over asking they, they achieved. So the big thing that I get all the time, cause you know, a lot of people think that they're like an amateur home stager. Uh, like that's, you probably know more than I do, but that's, yeah. you know, pretty common. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone's watching HGTV and everybody has an opinion about something, right? Right. As it relates to, you know, how the inside of a house looks. Mm -hmm. um, why is it not a good idea for people to stage their own home? Yes, and, and, and I know staging, staging can be quite um, intrusive, and I think that's maybe what puts some people off, because you all of a sudden have this person in your home telling you to take down your personal items and, you know, decluttering and changing your furniture repositioning, and it can turn your world completely upside down. Um, but really, your home speaks to you. Um, you know, you have items in your home that, you know, you could have been collecting in for 20, 30 years. Um, it, and what we want to do is we want to have your home now speak to potential buyers. And it's really hard as a homeowner to um, not take it personally. Um, but that's, that's exactly what has to happen. You have to have someone, a, a third party come in that's completely objective and unbiased and, and sometimes, you know, seem ruthless. <laughs> um, but really if the, if your end, if your end goal is to sell your home for the most amount of money in the shortest period of time, you really need that professional third party, like I said, to come in and, and really help you to decide, okay, this is what needs to go. And these are the reasons why. Um, we're not just doing it because it's something that we think, you know, we like to, you know, you know, just for any reason, it's just because these are the things that over time as, as, as professional stagers that we see time after time after time of what turns potential buyers off in a home. Um, you know, we, you know, as, as a certified stager, we know all of these sort of tricks of the trade as well. Um, you know, ways to make the, the house flow better the you know the with furniture layout lighting how to make your house feel more spacious more bright more airy um and these are all the things that a professional home stager will do for you um so it, it is really hard for for someone to stage their own home um you know you as a real estate agent as a professional that's why people seek you out when they're selling their home um same with you know if you need, you need a professional lawyer and a mortgage broker. These are all professionals that you want to have on your side when you're selling your big, you know, your biggest investment. Um, so you really need to leave it to the professionals when you're, when you're selling your home. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Um, you mentioned something um, in there called bias, right? Yeah. Um, can you explain sort of why people have that bias about their own property? Like, why do you think that you know, someone may not see what a professional sees. Right. Well, for instance, you could have a homeowner and, and this is not right or wrong. I mean, if you, your home is your home. Uh, if you like bold colors, if you like um, really 
abstract artwork or a lot or a lot of you know um wallpaper or heavy drapery there's nothing wrong with that it's your home um but but when you're selling your home and, and that is the, you know, the term is we don't we don't sell as we dwell um you know your home your home now has to it's it we're marketing your home it's it's a product on the market and we have to be able to um you know attract as many potential buyers as possible so that's when we come in and we say okay that's why we tell you to paint those you know perhaps bright pink walls or you know maybe sometimes you know really really dark colored walls um there's there's actual you know reasons and data behind these um these decisions that in and suggestions that we make for your home so the professionals obviously have access to that data which is what sort of separates them Mm -hmm. um, from somebody that's just kind of making it up as they go. Um, if they have that data, do you think it would make sense for every home to be staged? Absolutely. Um, no matter if it's a small little starter home to a luxury style home, again, it's, it's, it's making that home as, um, marketable to as many people as possible. Um, you know, that's when you start getting those multiple offers because it's attracting so many, many people. So many people can see themselves living in that home. Um, so no matter if it's, like I said, if it's a small home or a luxury home, it's all about making it uh, appeal to the, the widest uh, number of people. I agree. Um, the major sort of roadblock that I've, I've witnessed to home staging from clients is the perception of affordability. Right. Um, is it possible for home staging to be affordable? And why do you think that home staging has this negative rap of being, you know, only for the ultra exclusive homes that are like magazine worthy? What, why do you feel that home staging kind of gets that that rap i don't really know why it gets that rap um you know i it is a huge misconception that it's it's expensive and people will often completely discount it without even looking into it because that's the that's the idea like it's just oh it's too expensive there's no way that that you know we're we're gonna it's gonna be worthwhile for us um and that is so far from the truth um I, for instance, I recently staged a very small starter home, little two bedroom home, young couple. It was their uh, selling their first home and their budget was $500 to have it staged and $200 for me to come in and do a consultation. Now my consultation um, is a service that I offer and it's probably one of the most important services that I offer. and. What I do is I meet with the homeowner, I walk through the home, I take a lot of pictures, I make a lot of notes, um, and then I come back within 24 to 48 hours with a detailed report. It's a room by room written report. And I include so much information in this report, um, everything from furniture repositioning, decluttering, um, if there needs to be some paint color changes, I will recommend paint color changes, lighting, if uh, you know they may, maybe need some updated fixtures, I'll even include links as to where they can purchase really affordable light fixtures. Um, so this is actually where you the, the homeowner can start getting involved because I leave this report with them and, and it's kind of a to-do list for them um, where they can start their decluttering and moving furniture around and maybe taking drapery down and doing some gardening and, and all these little things that are gonna make such a huge difference. I, I recommend all these items and it's all these little things that add up that really make the home show so well and look fantastic in pictures, which as you know, is so important right now because mm -hmm. the majority of people are doing their home search online before they will even go out to see a home and they will often discount a home by how they look in pictures. So really you want your home to shine um, in the photographs. Um, 
so anyways, we did this report for them. They did, they checked off a lot of my to-do lists. Um, the house looked great, even just from that. And then I came in with some accessories. Um, the one of the rooms was an office. We decided to put that, stage that back into a bedroom because it was only a two bedroom house. Um, just brought in, you know, some updated curtains and throw pillows just to brighten the space because it was quite, uh, their furniture was quite dark. Um, and that, you know, I was there for a few hours, $500. The house sold in 48 hours um, over asking. Excellent. So I think for a $700 investment, they were absolutely thrilled. Um, how has COVID-19 affected your business? Um, obviously, COVID-19 has affected everyone's business. Um, yes. You know, what are you doing as far as taking precautions to make sure that um, you're safe, um, yeah. the, your clients are safe? What are you, what are you doing when you go out um, for these consultations? To yeah. So I obviously wear a mask. Um, I hand sanitize before I enter the home. I try not to, you know, for consultations and things when I'm just walking through the home, I don't really touch anything. Uh, if I come in on stage day, um, items that I'm bringing into the home. So all of the rental companies that I'm affiliated with for the furniture rental, all those upholstered furnitures and items like that, they've all been sanitized before they come into the home. Um, and then any items that I bring into the home, I make sure that I haven't used them in a home um, within the last you know, week or so, um, so that everything is COVID free. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, yeah. it's top of mind for everybody right now, right? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. One of the things that, that sort of agents have to tackle often, which we sort of reluctantly do, is selling an empty house. Mm -hmm. um, what's the challenge from a staging perspective went up against an empty house? And do you think if the person has the opportunity to stage an empty house, um, you know, how much do you think that would affect the overall sale of that home? Well, what we see a lot with vacant properties is they tend to sit on the market a lot longer. And there's a re good reason for that. And, you know, I mean, builders um, with their model homes, they're always staged. And there's a reason for that because it's all about evoking emotion and an empty house has absolutely no emotion. It's, it's cold and it's lifeless. It's all of the furnishings and artwork and accessories that really make a house come alive and sing and, and speak to that person. Um, and two, what we find with vacant homes is if there's any kind of flaws in the home, they're, they're much more prevalent when a house is vacant. So you'll see those, you know, cracks on the walls or, you know, realize that maybe the windows are, are too small or, you know, all of these things. So um, that's another huge reason to, to stage a vacant home, as well as a lot of times empty rooms will look smaller. And I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive, but it, it is true. Um, and as well, people can't really envision how they're going to, how the room lays out when, when they, there's nothing in it, like where, where would our couch fit or is, would our couch even fit in this room? Um, people have a really hard time envisioning that. It's kind of always amazing to me how much trouble people do have sort of envisioning stuff like that. Have yeah. you ever run into a scenario? I've heard stories from other agents where um, items are sort of placed in a home from a stager and, you know, the person buying the house loves that item so much that they want to purchase that item or have it kind of included in, in the um, purchase of the home. Has that ever happened to you before? Yes, it happens quite a bit. And, and it's funny, actually, I think probably 90% of the time I've staged homes, people will say to me, oh, <laughs> I wish we had have done this before we sold our home. Like, I wish we could have enjoyed our home like this. Um, and I, you know, I never thought about putting that sofa there or this here or, and then they'll say to me, can you come and help me with our new house? Um, so it's, it, you know, over time, when you move into a house, a lot of, like life gets in the way and, and, you know, you, if you have kids and work and everything else that's going on, um, 
you know, you don't really have time to maybe just sit back and think about, you know, furniture placement or throw pillows or artwork on walls or, you know, staging your countertops to make your kitchen look beautiful. I mean, that's really what it's all about. It's about us creating this beautiful, um, you know, vision of, for this house and just making it look look like a model home, essentially. Um, that every, everyone that walks in aspires to want that home, right? It's all about, you know, that luxury feel. Even, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about like super high-end things. I'm just saying um, you can really elevate the space and how a room looks with, when it's staged. It's amazing how you're right. Sometimes it's just the littlest things yeah. that make the difference. Um, you mentioned before leaving things to the pros. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big proponent of that. Um, if somebody doesn't have furniture, uh, you also mentioned sort of, you know, renting furniture. What are some options as far as, you know, um, renting furniture, um, furniture that you may have? Sort of what options are available to people if, if they just don't have those items available? Yeah. So I, I affiliate myself with a number of different rental companies. Um, so I can then go in and pick the furniture that works in that space, you know, um, with the style of the house, you know, if it's a colonial style house versus a modern house, um, I want to bring in furniture that suits the look of that house. And then there's also the importance of the, the, the space. So I want to bring in furniture that's the right scale to the room because we want to make, you know, we don't want to make the room look, you know, oversized or sort of empty versus you know there's no room to walk around um so these are all important things when selecting your furniture pieces and so i will go in and select all the furniture pieces um and then we organize all of the the delivery it comes in we place it where we want it and then um and then i follow up with all of the the beautiful things that that make your house look fantastic with all the accessories and things like that Amazing. We've talked about the inside of the house in great detail. Mm -hmm. How important is it to sort of also have an eye and pay attention to the outside of the house, like that curb appeal, yeah. living spaces? Yeah. Is that more say, important than it was before? And how important is that overall? Um, some say it's the most important thing um, because people make that decision as soon as they roll up to your front door. Um, I would say it is very important and it's important year round. Even, you know, some people say, well, I don't have to worry about it. It's winter, but there's lots of little things and, and tips that you can do to really make that house have curb appeal year round. And I, and in my staging consultations, which I talked about, I give lots of little tips. So for instance, right now in the fall, um, you know, you want to make sure things like your leaves are, are raked before people arrive. Um, touch up paint, like painting your garage door, your front door, making, you know, if it needs painting, um, having seasonal flowers out. So right now, you know, the mums and, and, and flowers like that, making sure there's no dead plants in your, in your gardens, um, cutting all of that back and then maybe adding some seasonal, um, flowers if that's needed, you know, putting in some fresh mulch, um, extending that outdoor space. So right now I'm, I tell people, you know, keep that patio furniture out, but let's add items that will make it feel cozy. So, you know, put out some nice fall colored, you know, throws and pillows. Um, if you can like have a fi you know, fire table or fire lamps and have those on, um, you know, outdoor lighting, um, all these things so people, so extending that, that sort of outdoor living space right into the fall season. Those are the kinds of things that I would help help with people right now when when um, they're getting ready for their house to put on the market in the fall. In your opinion, and this is strictly your opinion, <laughs> right? Or you can say it is fact <laughs> if you want. Okay. Um, what is the most important room in the house as far as, you know, people making their decision about whether this house is the right house? Well, everyone would say kitchens. Um, and 
and I would have to agree a lot of the time. But the problem is, is you can't not not everybody can afford to update or upgrade their kitchen. And sometimes it's not worth upgrading because if someone comes in, they might have their own idea of what they want. Like they might not want a white kitchen. They might want, you know, a black kitchen, right? So I would say as a, for staging purposes, I would say the main living areas are the most important. I would say your, your living room, family room, your dining room, and your master bedroom. Excellent. Excellent. I would say that in my experience, those are the rooms that get neglected the most, right. which is kind of sad, right? Because yeah. I agree with you. Um, you know, people want to make the kitchen their own. Yeah. Um, you don't want to do something that's going to turn somebody off. Yeah. Right. Um, potentially. And, you know, uh, even, the, even with a dated kitchen, there's lots of ways to make it, um, you know, look a lot nicer and, and look a lot better in the photographs. And I do that all the time, you know, get, you know, clearing off the countertops, but then not just, I mean, a kitchen can look quite cold and sterile. So it's about bringing in those elements that make it kind of look warm and inviting. So I use a lot of um, faux plants and wood bowls and um, you know things like artichokes in the wood bowl um, lots of greenery um, all of those things can even make a kitchen just look a lot better than, than having the knife block out in the toaster <laughs> exactly um, if somebody wants your help what's the best way for them to reach you so you can either go on my website, which is birchandcohomestaging.com. And on my website, um, there's an actual uh, form you can fill out and that will send me a direct email. Or you can give me a phone call at 905-320-7818 or follow me on Instagram at Birch and Co. And on my Instagram page, actually, I do lots of um, tips. So even just home sellers that are just maybe thinking about putting their house on the market, I do Tip Tuesday. Lots of great tips, um, even if you're thinking about getting your home um, ready to sell, because sometimes it's, you know, maybe six months away. Um, and there's lots of little things you can start doing now. Um, so it's not quite so overwhelming. Excellent. Thanks for coming on the show, Jennifer. I hope we can have you back again. I really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you.